Hello, entire world. What I've got here, since I don't have a hydraulic press tool for pressing bearings and um, bushings, I've made a little, I'd call it fairly light duty, um, hydraulic press. The cylinder is only capable of 40,000 pounds, so I think my little 2x4 should be just fine for this one. I'm kidding. It would tear this thing apart in a heartbeat, but this will work fine for what I'm doing. I've got a yoke and a vacuum seal right here for the vacuum activated 4x4 um, on my 2005 excursion. I've already done this on the 2003. I did not have a press and I did it with a hammer, which was a terrible idea. You are going to need this specialized tool here in order to press these on. I don't have the part number on here. I've got it in another video, but uh, if I can find that here in a minute, I'll tell you what that is. That is the um, specific press tool for these Ford vehicle um, vacuum activated axle uh, the hub lockers that engage your 4x4. So you will need one of those in order to set the proper depth of this little vacuum seal here. Okay, here's how she works. I just built this out of some scrap 4x4s. I've got about 35 five and a half inch um, lag screws holding this together and that is just barely enough to um, to still give me enough force on this to, to push the sleeve together. So I don't know what kind of force this thing's taking but I, I'd say it's probably at least a ton and a half, maybe two tons to force this um, metal on metal friction fit together. Get you set over here so you can kind of see what we're doing. I did put a little set screw in here just to hold this so I'm not having to hold that 20 pound piece of steel with my hand every time I do this. First, you're going to want to put, and I apologize if I get in front of the camera, you're going to want to put this vacuum seal on here. That faces out towards this metal dust and rock shield. Just set it on there, get it centered. You can't start it by hand, just absolutely no way. Ooh, boy, did I tell you wrong there. I sure hope nobody fast forwarded right when they heard that. That's upside down. You want that steel face facing the press. Boy, that would have messed up in a hurry. That's why you gotta not fast forward through these things. You'll miss something real important like an idiot telling you the wrong directions the first time. Okay. Boy, I think it's heavy. Okay, that little set screw works really well. Put my little 20 ton jack in here. Get it positioned under that. There we go. And make sure you are centered well. I've got a center line, I don't know if y'all can see that, drawn on the jack. And I'm just eyeballing the front to back. But this has to be centered, otherwise you're gonna put this on crooked. And if you decide to build one of these little hydraulic presses at home, make sure Everything is square and 90 degrees so you don't mess up this seal. These things are not fun to take off. They're not cheap to put on. And I'll show you all here in a minute how I actually built this whole thing. Just nice and easy. Here we go. And even though this is a 20 ton jack, it's pretty stiff pushing this piece on. Another nice thing about this, this tool is that it will not let you overpress the, um, the seal. It'll bottom out on the, the axle component and it will prevent you from overdriving your seal. Boy, that's hard to push. I'd like to know what kind of force I'm getting out of this thing. Can't be all that much since this is wood. But I'd say we're probably bottomed out. It doesn't look like it. But I hear the wood giving now, so we're probably there. Okay, I'll let the pressure off. Oh, 
I'll have to get a force gauge and see how much pressure this thing will really hold up to. going to have that little little lip there by design that's what this little lip on the bottom here is is to set that space and that is perfect the whole way around so that one is set in place i added a little extra grease to it but she is ready for ready for action yeah that's good next something i've had to do on the other yokes is I took an angle grinder and just took off the rust and a little bit of the build up here so I can get my C clips that retain the cups on the U joint put in there. And uh, got another video showing you all how to pull these rusted, seized U joints apart without destroying this thing. Don't use one of those great big C, um, C clamp style presses to push these apart. If they're rusted and seized, all that's going to do is crush crush your um your yoke here and I, I did that actually earlier those big c-clamp uh presses have more than enough force when you've got an impact gun on them to smash that relatively thin metal there i was able to bend it and use it but i'll probably have to replace it at some point so there you go a little homemade well, that's right i told you i was going to show you how it works well let me see here oh show you what kind of screws and bolts I've got in this thing. As soon as I find a drill to take it apart. Now, if you're not gonna watch this part, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd give the video a thumbs up. It helps us get these out to more people. I like sticking magnets to all of what I, what I work with here to hold my tools. Got a good handful of magnets on there to hold drill bits and things. Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this without dropping everything. I'm gonna pull that screw first. Okay. So this tool does not have any visible part numbers, so I can't tell you what that is, but they're readily available on eBay and Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. These are worth every penny. You definitely have to get one of these or you can't press those seals in place. And this will also install all of this in the axle of the vehicle. And that larger flange will bottom out when the proper depth is set on here. So you do need to have that, that tool. Okay, set that up. Really. You should always wear gloves when you're working with grease and oil. So says the state of California, and I'm going to agree with them on that one. Get you out of the stand here. What I've done to build this, I just drilled a two and a quarter inch hole. Two and an eighth would have worked if I had the uh, the drill for that. And that's just enough to receive this to get it up out of the way and help stabilize all this when you put the jack on it. That thing weighs about 15 or 20 pounds. And then I just got a heck of a lot of these nearly six inch screws holding this together. And you need at least this many screws. Of course, this is old wood. If it was new wood, might not have needed so many. But it was pulling apart until I put all the rest of these screws in it. So it's putting out a lot of force. added these to give it a little bit extra before I rip off the base. Whenever you stick screws into end grain like that, they don't hold very well this direction in wood, so you need a lot of them. And I've got these screws actually going across the grain at a bit of an angle, so they're not just driven straight into the end grain. But that's really about all there is to it. You can use a much smaller jack. A lot of these hydraulic presses that you have in the stores, um, similar concept. They're typically only six to 10 tons. So you can use a fairly small jack to put these things together and press your parts together. But uh, I stole a lot of these ideas from someone else on YouTube. I did come up with that just based on designs of the, the ones you buy from the store. 
So I've been pleased with it. And one of the benefits to this, if you have a really small shop like I do, you can take this completely apart and either throw it away or save a few of the parts for the next time you have to do this. I'll probably just throw it away since it only costs five or $10 in wood and the screws are all reusable. But there you go. If you don't have room for a hydraulic press, this may get you by on some of the projects. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd hit the, the like button there and uh, smash the bell icon to be notified of our future videos. If you have any recommendations for a future video, please leave it below in the comments. I do read those and respond to them. Even if you're mean, I will still respond and appreciate your comment. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.